welcome back, Achievers, to your Easy Achievers Gaming Podcast for the week of July 30th, 2020. I'm one of your hosts, Elijah, sitting across from me virtually, like always, is Alex. Hello, evildoers. Oh, evildoers. Okay, I can get with that. What was that show that I, did that joke? Um, like everyone was evil, you were villains and things? <laughs> I don't know, but my mind was going for the Stanley. You remember that show that everybody created their own superhero oh and then whoever God, wins at the yes. end made the comic book out of them? It was the awesome. um, Who Wants to Be a Superhero or something yeah. like that? Yeah, it was like, yeah, I think that's what it was called. I loved that show. Oh my God, dude, dude I love your encyclopedic knowledge of TV shows. Like, I, I could have never <laughs> grasped that in a million years, and I think I watched every episode of that show because I think it only aired for one season. Um, maybe, no, yeah, it only one season. The very last one, what had he had like these electricity powers. It was a white, this white guy. Uh-huh. I forgot his name now. Electricity man. That's what that was. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to look it up, but I remember because they said if he wins, he would get a comic book out of him, and I don't know what if he ever did. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> I assume, <laughs> I assume no, but hey, I have no idea. It, it reminds me of Last Comic Standing. You remember that show? yes yeah I, w- I watched a little bit of that not much but that was re- that reminds me of one of the things where it's like who like i, I think a f- i know a few people from that show but i mean it's not like it's like american idol like you're not you're not guaranteed to still like people like you mm-hmm. and if you know from last week's episode american idol is canceled <laughs> what oh, what did you say <laughs> if you know if you remember from last week remember i had i thought american idol was canceled you, you oh, were like, yeah, i sure, just yeah. watched it <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> oh god yeah so uh speaking of i don't know canceled shows i don't know we're not a canceled show podcast don't worry we are the easy achievers game podcast we come to you every single friday on the free feeds and of course early over on patreon.com slash easy achievers to give you the gift of knowledge that's right knowledge you get you get it straight to those holes in the what is that sides of your head i guess would be would be where the I found it, I found the guy. It, oh. his name was Feedback. They did make a comic book. Fleabag. Sorry. No, no, Feedback. Like, like you know, Feedback. <laughs> okay, that that's even funnier than what I said. <laughs> In uh, Feedback, and he he did get a comic book, but it was the free comic book day. <laughs> oh, that's sad. But uh, he did get a comic book, and it show it says something about season two premieres in July. Which is <laughs> hey, season two premieres in July. Sure, 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 it does. Sure yeah right. I wonder if it was any. I assume it wasn't because people. I assume people didn't read it, but that would have been cool if yeah. it was actually good. Yeah, oh, God, this show brings me back. Oh, it brings me back to to days of Monster Energy Drink diet, uh, uh, like just regular Coke and ramen, right? Trading spaces, boys versus girls. You remember that show? No. Wait. It's I think the so. one where it, it's. You remember where Wife it's Swap? Like, <laughs> I watched that the show. Wife Swap. Was interesting. Only, no, a my wife did too. only a few times and and, and it, <laughs> never mind never mind <laughs> i was about to make a joke because like you think they slept with each other but like yeah it's, that's a that's a, a joke i'm sure it's people like, have used a thousand contract? yeah I'm sure, I'm sure that's a joke people use a thousand times so it's, it's no use yeah. here but what were you saying i cut you off i don't remember anymore man. i don't i don't either but but you know what i do remember i remember oh. patreon.com slash easy achievers you can go over there give us uh, give us a buck that gives you the exclusive we just actually put up today. You can go listen to a, a completely exclusive to only patreon.com slash easy achievers. And if you're a freeloader, don't worry. You can still help us out. You don't have to financially help us. You can help us with your clicks and your eyes. You just go over to everywhere we put something on. You listen, you like, you comment, you subscribe, you share it to all your friends. That helps us so, so much. And if you want to scream at us for our opinions, you can, of course, head over to Twitter at EVM1000 at Cravey Sip Skater. We have a whole lot of news. Um, we skipped last week because of the showcase, and um, the news didn't stop. So we have a lot to go <laughs> over. Before we get into all this, very quickly, we will hit what have you been playing? Alex, I throw that yeah. question to you. Um, I've been playing a little bit of Ghost of Tsushima, not mm, much. Uh, mm. I haven't been playing. I haven't Oof. played much this week. Oof. Just that, because of the baby. That um, heavy sigh at the beginning of that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, I, I have some things to say about it. Oh, it's, so do I. It's, it, dude, it, don't get me wrong. It's fun. 
but it's hard because I I have those moments where like it doesn't bring me back. It, like it doesn't want to like like it doesn't want it doesn't pull me back to it. Like I want to like I was like oh I'm like I like I don't I'll think about it all day. Like if I'm like okay well, I want to go play something so I'll play Ghosts. But I'm not like for example like I was playing Last of Us. And then when I stop playing about it and just I'll be doing something, I'm like, God, I want to go back to Last of Us and play 100%. that. Like it, it's not doing that for me. Yeah, same, same here. Um, I think it's just a little too repetitive. I think because once yeah. you learn the f- the four stances, that's the game, and you can pretty much do that pretty early on. Before Act One, I had all the stances. Oh, no, for sure. And once same. once you learn that, like it, it just kind of gets harder. Kind of like the people need more hits, but. It, that's really yeah. all it is um and it lacks like versatility i think unless <sighs> how do i phrase it so it, it it's very versatile if you use all of the equipment and stuff you have but if you use all your equipment i feel super o- i don't know about you i feel super op like, like oh, no, for one sure. smoke bomb i feel like i kill almost everybody and then my kunai basically give me three free kills because i throw three kunais and they break it's crazy guard. i barely use even that i just like when i see a shield okay stance break the shield hit this guy twice i see a staff all right stance and i just like i don't even i don't, I don't even use any of the like bombs or anything i just fight i think my issue with the game is i'm doing too much i think i need to really frame back and stop trying to complete everything because i am i didn't i didn't leave the first island until i did i try to do until i did every single thing and i think Mm. i'm getting burned out um yeah and i do still want to talk about this game i I still want to do a spoiler cast eventually when we beat it so we because i do want to talk about the game but it doesn't Mm. help that the character kind of is a little vanilla and not yeah. super interesting so far. I like his 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 family history. Um, the thing with his dad, I don't really feel compelled with. Um, you yeah. Know, I I I hope they. I wish they learned a little bit with cutscene work and camera work from God of War, because mm-hmm. the camera camera is just static. It doesn't move or flesh with the character during pivotal moments in storytelling. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that really hurts its ability to make me feel things. Because when I'm just staring at people's backs the whole time and not seeing their face emote, I just really can't care much about the scene. And I feel like that yeah. hurts the game. Yeah, no, and I have to say one thing. Go ahead, say it. If, say it and we'll get into the news. Oh, If, if you're going to make this a samurai stealth game then don't make a bunch of cutscenes <laughs> to where it makes me try to feel bad. I I can't... Every time I try to use a new item to like like to do that, I get a certain cutscene, and it, it's so annoying. I don't... I get what they're trying to do, right? They are trying to tell you that what you're doing is, like, not honorable or whatever, but I yeah, really... Yeah, just only... Don't do it as much. Yeah, I don't... I don't. I, I guess I get it because they can't. Like the samurai are known for this honor based system, and it seems like their Jin is going against all of that throughout the game, because mm-hmm. you're constantly referred to your barbaric demon actions by yeah. the people, um, and it, and I'm guessing we're gonna get more of that as we progress to the story, because I feel like I already know how the game will end. I'll be shocked if I, you know, I'll, I'll be surprised if it doesn't end the way I think it is, but I. I'm curious to see where it goes, and I think I know, but um, I did learn that, and I thought the actual assassinations and, and fighting stealthily was like some sort of hidden morality system. Apparently, it isn't. Yeah. Um, there, okay. So you could assassinate everyone in the game; nothing different does happen, which I think oh, is yeah, a, sure. I think is an interesting choice. Um, but apparently, one of the game directors did say the more stealth you kill, it affects the weather. I don't know how. I mean, the guy made the game, so I don't see why I wouldn't believe him, but he says, I assume if you stealth kill more people, the the world around you reacts and gets more stormy, maybe, I think is what he was saying. Weird. Yeah, I don't Uh, don't know. By the way, it's it's weird how the light, like, the night and day thing works, because I literally, like, it's... it, it feels like it moves too fast. I literally was maybe horseback riding for like five, not even mm-hmm. ten minutes. And I went from like morning, daytime to like already nighttime. I'm like, how? It's only been five minutes. Yeah, so someone actually made a GIF on Twitter said that was a 
pretty drastic biome change. He he runs from this kind of forest light and immediately turns yeah. into a field, and it turns. It yep. looks like the like a tsunami is coming, and he like just yep. l- turned a little bit. So I I do think there's either bug issues or they really want you to feel a difference in area and, and or something. But there might be some hidden bug issues with how the weather interacts with certain things. I don't know, man. But I have seen the drastic changes that you're talking about. Hmm. But enough about Ghost of Tsushima. Me and Alex want to talk about G4 coming back. Yes, that's right. G4. G4. Yeah. X-Play. Attack of the show. All the shows that you used to watch as a kid. Sitting there eating your uh, whatever it is. You fancy 3D Doritos. Your cheese balls. Your licorice sticks. Anything you sit there and you watch as a kid. and it, <coughs> it, Just eat copious and copious amount of sugar. Uh, <laughs> go. Let's go to the store. In... And out of nowhere, tease G4 seems to be making a return in 2021. Details are light currently, but they are still owned by Comcast. And it seems, from my perspective, Olivia Munn might have brought this back from the dead. For those who do not know, Olivia Munn is dating Tucker Roberts, who is the son of the CEO of Brian Roberts. So she might be actually the one who brought it back, which would be pretty cool. Um, yeah. And if you go to G4TV.com, you're greeted with the game of Pong, which was in almost, I, I, if I remember correctly, it was in the opening of Attack of the Show and then like in between commercial breaks that like people will be playing Pong. But if you go to their website right mm-hmm. now, you'll get to play a thing of Pong. Um, you're, uh, I did it um, actually a little bit before recording. Um, a bunch of like texts come up and like a little funny jokes like, oh, look at you, you're a hacker or whatever, but cool i'm excited uh we're light on details so there's not much to talk about Uh, we don't even know what's coming back if x play or attack of the show is coming back or any other details other than g4 said they're coming back so that's exciting yeah it is very exciting Um, apparently it's web-based i did forget to add that it it seems to be web-based it's not like a it's not like a tv show or anything okay it's 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 not a channel anymore no i don't uh, no not not from um i think it was the head executive producer or something over there that's what they believe that's what he said but yeah, okay. yeah, that, yeah, that's no, really it. I, it. Not not too much to talk about, but I am excited to see more. Um, give me a show, G four. I'm just hoping. Yeah, no, I'm I'm assuming I'm hoping that this bringing this back, uh, people will see that uh, you know be like, oh yeah, we should bring this more back, or we should go back to the old ways of certain things. So like, mm. I hope that it just because a lot of things have just changed a lot, and some things I don't I don't care for, and it's not as exciting anymore. I re- I just hope they go back to the older ways. Okay, Alex, you can't say that and expect me not to poke and prod that. What what specifically mm. are you talking about? Like, for example, E3. There it's we not, go. It hasn't been the same in a same, long time. Same. That's the big one. Yep, that's the huge one. Like, I miss, I miss, I miss the whole like, God, what was the like the best year for this? Like when you know uh, you're you're expecting a certain game, they show a trailer or not even a trailer. They, they yeah, I guess they could show a trailer and they talk about like let's say. Gosh, what was it? I think it was the first Black Ops or maybe Black Ops 2. I can't remember which game it was. But they're like, oh, yeah, this is this. now, uh, Or they're coming out to talk about the game. And they're like, actually, we're going to show you. And they, he, the guy's just playing on stage with the controller. And they, we see gameplay. Like, what happened to that? Like, the interactiveness yeah. of, of them showing you, like, this, this is what this is. Hey, I have a controller. Like, Let's uh, play the game together. It's like, thank you. Like, Jesus. Yes. Like, like I, I don't want to see... I don't want you. I don't want you to talk about the game. Just show me it. Or we just get these CG trailers all the time. It's like just like let's just relax on this stuff. And yeah. Like, let's get back to the roots of why we like these things in the first place. Yeah. We like and seeing like if people they grab a controller. It's very humanizing too. You're grabbing a controller. You're showing a live demo. I know it's hard, devs. I know there's there might be a dev listening to this be like, dude, that's hard and that costs a lot of money. I get it, but like, yeah, that's a great way to show how just, much it, it, dedication that is. Yeah, it's, it's showmanship. It shows that you're like you care what you want your fans to see like i i, I don't know I, and the, other than like and then the smaller ones like your psx like i don't know if we ever see that again yeah i Just, don't, like, I don't know i don't know if they're interested in doing psx anymore that's a lot of money i mean it's a lot of free publicity and, and it's a lot of people that need to talk about it i think it should come back um i i think xbox needs to continue their xo events that they're doing uh, mm. cause they're just fun little events that we can have. And maybe one day me and you can go and we can have in-person videos. It's just fun to have that kind of weekend to talk about the things we love. Yeah. Right. Cause, cause there, there isn't like, you know, you can go to IGN, you can listen to podcasts every week, but to have a day celebrating a specific thing is very fun. 
And no, for I, sure. I do feel like that's missing, right? In this summer, what, yeah. what summer game fest thing that's happening right now, it's like it, it, it's confusing mm. and random, and it doesn't seem like anything really is going on. It just seems randomly like, hey, there's something coming out in a week, and and we listen to it, and and yeah. it doesn't really get very exciting. Like like the other day, the um, the Avengers War Zone, or sorry, War Table was shown, right? I, I forgot. I didn't even realize it was out. And it's like. Can we get some like? Can we get someone that some sort of streamlined thing with this stuff? And maybe yeah, that's, that's not what they want. Maybe they do want it to be a hit on YouTube and and people like watch the VOD or something. But but I I would love like a one stop shop where this is all the news and and we're gonna cover this for a hard month and we'll have these days set for the big events. Yeah. Like what happened to all that? I miss it too. I I'm right there yeah. with you, man. Like I said, hey man, I just want like I want to where uh, there's a, a day where everybody is gonna be excited for, and not to where like okay, when well, when are we gonna get this? When is like all this randomness? Like when like I forgot the whole Avengers War table to that even came out. It was out. really like, good, by the way. It. Like I don't even I haven't seen anything of this game since that first trailer. I did forget the write up on that, which is a shame because I did want to talk about that. Let me um. Uh, let me try to recap you real quick, Alex. I do want to talk okay. about really quick the um, uh, the beta. I believe it's August second for PlayStation. Is that right? And that might be too soon. It might have been August twenty second. Let me see. No, okay. that's too late. I think August twenty second is the last one. Let's let's look up Avengers the game. Let's see what comes up here. I mean, I think I saw uh, I think I saw I saw a screenshot of it, and uh, people are getting excited for it. But um, I'm I am wanting to see more of this game because like i said i haven't looked at anything about it so mm -hmm. like i want to be excited for it well they announced hawkeye that's like the big thing you want to like you, okay. you want to talk about so hawkeye will be playable he'll be released after the game is out most likely he'll be paid dlc um okay yeah so let's see here yeah so the first beta test will run from august 2nd to august 9th um that is only for ps4 owners who have already pre-ordered the game to be to be clear mm. the next weekend i believe is uh, this is august 14th through the 16th this is the open beta for playstation and then a closed beta for xbox and pc um mm -hmm. uh, apparently those who pre yeah so you have to pre-order xbox uh on xbox or pc to get that game you'll be able to preload that on august 13th then august 20 21st is an open beta for everyone on all platforms that's coming out on 21st to the, to the 23rd preload starts the day before the 20th um, you do need hmm. a Square Enix members account to get that. There are only four playable characters, I believe. Um, I think I need to do this off the top of my head because it's not written here. Yeah, so it's Hulk, Iron Man, Black Widow, and Miss Marvel. Those will be the f four playable characters. If you want a full in-depth dive, there is, of course, the War Table that is very good. I had a very fun time watching it. I'm very excited. Alex, are you playing this beta with me? Yeah, no, I definitely want to try it because, yeah. like I said, I, I'm... I want. I definitely want to check out more of this, so I'll definitely try it out. Good, good. I need you. I need you to play with me. Second question, Alex. Are you? Mm. Who are you playing as? Out of those four people. You said it was renamed those four characters. Hulk, okay. Iron Man, Miss Marvel, and Black Widow. Right. My first go to is Iron Man, of course, but I'm sure you want to be Iron mm -hmm. Man. So my 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 I'm, I'm kind, my interests go from Hulk and Miss Marvel. I'm like kind of around there. Okay. I'll I'll do I'll do Hulk or Iron Man. Hulk so. or Iron Man. Okay. We'll figure we'll figure it out more. I'll probably do Miss Marvel to to because she's seems really cool in, in a very uh, mm. unique playstyle. So I kind of want to try her out. Uh, so I might do Miss mm. Marvel, but Black Widow looks cool because she's just sh she's just shooting people in the face, which is always compelling. And she's got those uh, Nightwing sticks, uh, Kimbo sticks, I think uh, is what they're called. You yeah, beat yeah, them yeah. with a stick. Like that seems kind of fun too. Yeah. But enough of that. Uh, me and Alex will anticipably await the Avengers details. Uh, I, hopefully, we get the beta access. I, we'll figure that out later. But let's go over to Halo. This is over on IGN by Ryan McCaffrey. Uh, he sat down with. 343 interested developers Chris Lee and Paul Crocker. They discussed the new direction Halo is being taken and where the story is taking place. The article reads as followed. Halo Infinite takes place well after the ending of Halo 5 with a rampant Cortana nowhere in sight and the Master Chief adrift in space. The pilot as seen as the E3 2019 presentation trailer which 343 reconfirmed to IGN is the very beginning of the game then discovers him. 
The pilot's name will be revealed during the course of the campaign. Quote, he ended up being named by the actor who plays him, said Croker. The game's associate creative director, quote, the name is actually his best friends from childhood, which is kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Back to me, the Banished, as we know, it, will be the primary antagonist of the story known for their role in Halo Wars 2. They were questioned why the Banished, um, and their quote reads as follows, we don't want a game where players have to do homework to enjoy the game. But why the Banished? Because they're super cool and everyone likes them, he said with a laugh. Because more seriously, adding that the team wanted to, quote, have something that's an evolution to the Covenant, so you get something familiar, but something that's different. And it comes together to feel fresh. It is also going to be the end of the Forerunner saga, but also the beginning of something new, they added. We also know that War Chief Eskrim will be the main villain of the story. He leads the brutes on this Halo ring. The demo did end with him proclaiming the quote that we all remember and I love. This is my last fight. A true chest of legends. A story that will outlive us both. Set a fire in your heart. Bear your fangs. Fight hard. Die well. End quote. Cool. A little a little bit of a deeper dive if you guys are interested. Um, this is basically everything we talked about a few weeks ago. Uh, sorry, a week ago with the showcase. But just in case you missed it, that's a brief overview of what we're expecting in the new Halo game. Alex, has your tastes or ideas evolved with the timing of that demo? Um, no. So far, I'm still excited for it. Okay. I mean, I I'm not. Um, everybody's talking about this um graphic issue, graphic the con like the how the the way it looks issue. It it does not bother me at all. Mm-hmm. I'm, I know I'm going to enjoy the game, so I'm just waiting for this game to be out. I told my issues with it. If you're going to showcase a dude's face, you'd better polish it. His his face wasn't polished. Um, mm-hmm. His 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 hologram looked really nice, but when you just sit on his face for what I think was almost a full, eh, it's probably thirty seconds. That, you need you yeah. need to make sure it looks good. He didn't look good, so you got you, you gotta you gotta work that out. But aside from that, everything looked cool. I do think that was probably an older demo. Um, mm-hmm. They sh- they. At the very least, should have put work in progress somewhere on the screen. <laughs> that probably would have tempered some expectations or at least tempered some people's upsetness. Uh, because if people are expecting that game, and mm. most likely they're not getting that. I hope we get a better looking game. I don't know, but I'm hoping. Oh, uh, same, dude. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I do think it's going to be good, though. I, I have faith... That game is going to be good. Three four three has let me down before, but but I, I do think they've they've got this. Alex, this I next so this next story tickles me somewhere deep, deep, deep inside, and I am welling up with excitement. So I'm just going to get straight into it. Suikoden is back, sort of. The creators are making something. You may have noticed me screaming on Twitter. Uh, or just throughout the mountains where I live. My glee that Suikoden, my beloved franchise that seems to have been deader than Dr. Disrespect's streaming career, is being revived <laughs> with a spiritual successor. An excerpt from their Kickstarter page that they launched this, or I guess technically last Sunday, uh, reads like this. A brand new, high-quality JRPG from Yoshitaka Murama, Suikoden 1 and 2, and Junki Kawano, see so Wicked in 1 and 4, in their first collaboration in 25 years, a traditional six-character battle system utilizing painstakingly created 2D sprites and gorgeous 3D backgrounds, a deep story with 100 characters intricately intertwined, coming to PC at minimum goal with stretch goals to be in the game to additional platforms including PS5 and Xbox Series X. The game is called Iwaden Chronicles 100 Heroes. And boy, oh boy, does this read just like a Suikoden game, and I am so excited and so happy. If you, you know want what it, it looks like, uh, it looks like Octopath Traveler, like exactly, hundred percent. It looks like Octopath Traveler, exactly. I was like, guys, it, divert a yeah, little bit, it, but hey, it, I do think it's yeah. no, never mind. No, I can't even say that. I was about to say it does look different enough, and I just scrolled past the picture it's a color. that you could tell me it looks. Well, I mean, Octopath was in color too. It was just kind of like was it. It was like it was like on a gray. It was kind of like a, a grayscale type of. Thing. Yeah, it was like a film grain or something. I don't know. What yeah, you like this that. is full. Like, this one has color. Color. It looks sick. It I mean, looks, this looks this looks cool. Doesn't it look cool? Like you don't even care about tweaking and you're and you like you look like this, right? We haven't talked about this, by the way. Hey, look, you. It's it's like how we talked about skate. 
they talked about that and brought it back to existence. You brought you kept talking about this and you brought this guy I just, up. Yeah, into I screamed existence. into the void. I, I kept screaming until eventually someone said fine. <laughs> um and there's it's cats. There's cats apparently. Um just to quickly read. Uh, it, it would in Chronicles isn't just a classic style a JRPG. It's also full of adorable cats. Cats as far as the eye can see. Cats meowing. <laughs> cats napping. Cats exploring the world. Cats, cats, cats. Meow. That is from the page. I don't know why. Cats aren't a thing. In, I mean, there are cats in Suikoden, but I, I didn't think it was a big deal. But hey, they were excited about cats, so am I. Oh my god, this looks so cool. I gotta stop. I'm just gonna read everything. Uh, I'm gonna give everyone a detail of the story and we'll get back to you, Alex. Uh, This is from the detailing of their story. Our story begins in one corner of Alron, a tapestry of nations with diverse cultures and values. By dint of sword and by way of magical objects known as, quote, rune lenses, the land's history has been shaped by alliances and aggressions of the humans, beastmen, elves, and desert people who live there. (laughs) Oh god, this is sweeping in like to the tooth. The Galadin Empire has edged out other nations and discovered a technology that amplifies the rune lenses and magic. Now the Empire is scouring the continent for an artifact that will expand their power even further. It is on one sex expedition that Sean Kessling, a young and gifted Imperial officer, and Noah, a boy from a remote village, meet each other and become friends. However, a tease to fate will soon drag them into the fires of war and force them to re-examine everything they believe to be right and true. Ewan in the Chronicles Deep Story and Dialogue is helmed by uh, Yoshitaka Mura, and he was the master storyteller that wrote the scripts for both Suikoden 1 and 2. And you can also read the stories of all the main characters, other features, the, of course, incredible cats thing I just read, over on their Kickstarter page. And if you want to, there's plenty and plenty of tiers that you can pay for to get more and more features. Um, As of recording, July 30th, they have raised nearly two point four million dollars and are at almost thirty thousand backers. Jesus, are you gonna are you gonna do are you gonna put some into that? So, Alex, I'm torn between two specific tiers. There's one that gives me a vinyl of the soundtrack. Um, okay. It's not it's crazy expensive, but it's a, it's just enough expensive where I'm like, do I want to pay for that? And yeah. I'm a hundred percent gonna do at least the step below that. Um, so I'm just in between of what I want to do, basically. Yeah. I gotcha, I gotcha. But I am 100% back in this. Uh, they have all, I believe they've already got the pledges for the other games. Or sorry, the other systems. Let's, yep. Yeah, so they hit a million dollars. So they got war on many fronts, which means consoles unlocked. So they're coming to the consoles. They're coming everywhere. Um, they're constantly making more and more goals, apparently, it looks like, because they keep breaking them all, so... I am mm. very excited for this, Alex. That's good. I'm very excited. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for them. Hopefully, they it pulls through because I I I'll definitely try it. It's not, it looks cool. Now you brought up an interesting thing. I hope it pulls through. I hope this is good. I'm not blinded by other Kickstarter fails. Mighty Number no. Nine, of course, is in everyone's mind when they hear the word Kickstarter. <laughs> um, and of course, I did not. I I I did not back Bloodstained, but I was going to pay for it as soon as it came out, and I did do that. I bought it the day it came out. Um, Bloodstain. Um, mm. uh, not Curse of the Moon. That was the game I like. What was the other one? What's the? Whatever the the actual Bloodstain that needed the Kickstarter. I. I bought that, did not end up actually loving it, but I did love the side game they released for fun called Bloodstained Curse of the Moon, which is basically a retro Castlevania game. I love that game, and I actually just bought Bloodstained Curse of the Moon 2 that they just released, so I'm going to be playing Mm. that throughout the weekend. I hope this is good. I have faith that at least by bare minimum the script's going to be good. (laughs) So, I mean, uh, hopefully they they have good devs on their side and they make a good game. Um, I think they expect a 2023 release. I do not remember. Mm. And scrolling through very quickly, I do not see their expectations on release yet. But hey, um, I, they, they bring it out whenever they come out. I don't care. Uh, as long yeah. as it's good. Please, for the love of God, I don't ask for much. Be good. <laughs> Be good. <laughs> Moving on. Project X Cloud will be included in Game Pass Ultimate. That says it all. It's coming, Project X Cloud, in Game Pass Ultimate. As long as you pay for it, you'll be able to play any Game Pass Ultimate game on any device of your choosing. Rest in peace, Stadia. That was just a quick story I wanted to go over. Very exciting, but good lord, is Stadia super, super screwed down. 
because it comes with Game Pass Ultimate, and they yes. don't have to build a library like Stadia does. But uh, that, Alex, what were your thoughts? This was a later story that broke last. No, was it this week? I think it was later this week. But what do you think? It's exciting, of course, for us. Oh, for sure, dude. I'm I'm excited that uh, XCloud is going to be part of Game Pass Ultimate. Mm-hmm. Me too. Me too. Um, we've we've talked at nauseum about XCloud. I do think it changes uh, Xbox's direction. I think it's obvious that Xbox is in a completely new ball game with what they're doing yes. and how they're developing and how they're making services. Um, I want to bring a question to your attention, Alex. They okay. have, they seem to be slowly pulling back Xbox Live Gold. Now, I say that because they took away the ability to purchase a year of gold, I believe, on their Microsoft store. Mm-hmm. Do you think we're getting close to either a reduction in price on Xbox Live Gold or the complete takeaway of xbox live gold and mm. it's just game pass is that a future that, that we can expect i i don't i don't think they'll get rid of it completely because that everybody's so oh, you're, tired tired. Tired. you're a tired boy today aren't you <laughs> yeah, i'm a little tired uh, <laughs> um excuse me um but no i don't think they'll get rid of gold completely because not everybody's gonna want game pass ultimate um so some people are going to just want just the gold itself so i think they're going to stick with either the one month or three months just uh, and but then they got rid of the 12 months i think it's to incentivize people will be like hey i mean if you're going to pay that much you might as well go to grab this but hmm. i don't think they'll get rid of it hmm. it, bre- it gives me pause because they have no reason to get rid of a year membership off their online store they have zero reason mm-hmm. so why would they now i do think that is a sign of something what that is i'm not 100 percent sure at this point i could see them getting rid of xbox live gold and just combining it into game pass and increasing game pass a little bit Hmm. but i i don't know maybe i don't know maybe that's too crazy do you think it'd be too crazy to make a game pass and make you pay for just game pass and get online as well i mean so you mean are you saying like how it used to be like you can get Game Pass separately from online? No, no, no. So you can no longer buy gold. You okay. buy Game Pass that gives you both gold and Game Pass, but it's just called Game Pass now. Um. So if I if no, I, buy, if I, mean, I, I feel this, like that's what just, I feel like that's what just Game Pass Ultimate is. Right, but but that's but that but now you have you don't have an option for anything else. It's just Game Pass. So you at least mm. get people on the service, and it's all, and you have no matter what, it's the fifteen bucks a month. I see. I don't feel like people are gonna do that. I don't think so either. But that's just kind of a crazy little thing I just thought of. Yeah. I, I think something's gonna happen. I just don't know what. Maybe they'll surprise us with something else. But I think something's gonna happen. They they have no reason to get rid of the one year, anyways. So something will happen. To what end? I do not know. Alex, we're a bunch of sexists over on easy achievers apparently because according to ubisoft women just don't sell um this write-up is from tech radar i think it was too good for me to do my own write-up taking a couple quotes uh from around other places so i'm just going to read directly from them please go give them a click because this is a fantastic written article and it really just goes into everything you need to know so i'm going to read from the article again please give them the click this is over again on tech radar by vic hood Developers working on Assassin's Creed Odyssey were uh, pressured into adding a male lead by Ubisoft executives when female lead Cassandra was originally intended to be the sole protagonist, a new report claimed. According to Bloomberg, which was investigating recent reports of harassment, misogyny, abuse, and racism within Ubisoft, the company's, quote, machismo and, quote, culture spilled over to its products, impacting the uh, development of some of the biggest games and particularly the Assassin's Creed series. The report claims developers were pressured by Ubisoft executives to minimize the role of female protagonists in the Assassin's Creed series, resulting in prominent female character having lesser roles in the final games. According to Blue Book sources, an early outline of Assassin's Creed Syndicate script gave equal screen time to the game's twin protagonists, Jacob and Evie Frey. However, in the end product, Jacob was the lead protagonist. The issue reportedly arised again with Assassin's Creed Origins, according to Blue Book's source, Bayek's wife Aya 
was set to become the lead protagonist of the game, but her role shrank over time with Bayef taking center stage in the final version of the game. I'll add a little bit more to that quote. Um, so uh, in the beginning of the game, you're always going to play Bayek, but he was either going to be mm. injured or killed off, and you would then play Aya. Uh, just to add a little mm. bit uh, more of a uh, perspective to that. Um, uh, I'm, uh, I can't wait to talk about this. Uh, let's get back to the article, and then we can talk about it. More recently, it's reported that Cassandra was said to be the sole protagonist of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, but Ubisoft execs told the developers that this was not an option, and instead the game offers players the choice of playing as either Cassandra or her brother, Alexios. Cool. All of the directives came from Ubisoft's marketing department or from Surge. <clears throat> Who has 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 quitted? <laughs> Some of who've suggested female protagonists Say would again? sell. <laughs> has has scoot? Serge has scoot? I'm try, I'm try, we'll try one more time. Ha, has has cootie, <laughs> the Bloomberg report says. <laughs> this it seems like a piece of trash, so I don't mind uh, f- uh, ripping apart his name. Following the report, former Ubisoft employees took to Twitter to back the claims. One former female employee claims she was told on many accounts, or sorry, many occasions, that quote women don't sell end quote while another said she was told that quote the protagonist must be a sh- oh my god the protagonist must be straight white alpha male end quote are these are we monkeys what is this what is this bloomberg's investigation comes on the back of recent reports of harassment abuse and a toxic experiment ex- uh, sorry environment at ubisoft Earlier this morning, three Ubisoft executives stepped down from their roles following these accusations. Uh, creative command, I think it's Creative Commanding Officer Serge Hascuti Huti Huti, Global Head of <laughs> HR Cecily Cornett, and CEO of Ubisoft Montreal, Yannis Malat. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. Prior to these executives stepping down, Ubisoft released an official statement addressing the allegations, which said, quote, Concerning recent allegations raised against certain Ubisoft team members, we want to start by apologizing to everyone affected by this. We are truly sorry. We are dedicated to creating an inclusive and safe environment for our players, teams, and communities. It is clear that we have fallen short of this in the past. We must do better. We have started by launching an investigation to allegations of the support of specialized external consultants. Based on the outcomes, we are fully committed to taking any and all appropriate disciplinary action. As these investigations are ongoing, we cannot comment further. We are also auditing our existing policies, processes, and systems to understand where these have broken down and to ensure we can prevent detect and punish inappropriate behavior we will be sharing additional members that we are putting in place with our teams in the coming days our goal is to foster an environment that our employees partners and communities can be proud of one that reflects our values and that is safe for everyone something to add as well to this they are adding a system to incentivize i think it is inclusion and diversity i believe i might be butchering that a little bit but they are giving people bonuses based on their i i guess there's like a rating system i'm butchering this but you can probably google it or twitter or look for twitter to find that exact quote they're basically incentivizing it financially to improve the work environment it's uh, i mean it's crazy how they're saying like it's i mean this yeah, there's so many so many games that like have women um main characters as women that like are like amazing like for example the latest one last of us i was you're hitting it you're hitting exactly alex where i was going with this I mean, now God, that game was amazing i I, I actually posted this on twitter i hope that with the success of La- the insane success of last of us part two we'll just and, stop all of this she it, first I mean, off is a, is a woman prominently on the front page on the front page, which, which by the way, was an issue with the mm-hmm. first Last of Us, they didn't even want Ellie on the cover originally, but Naughty Dog made them put him on the cover. Second, and it's crazy too because you don't play as just one woman; you play as two main characters. <laughs> that's women. true. I didn't even think about that. Um, you do Third, play as off. you do play as two. Uh, we do play as two. Uh, we'll be. Uh, uh, don't say anything else, of course. But you do play as two female okay. protagonists. Uh, what were you saying, Alex? No, I was saying the third one. You, play, of course, you play as two women. One of them 
is are they, one of them is a lesbian. Yes, I was going to add that too. One of them is also gay, which again destroys yeah. some sort of cultural identity or whatever you want to call that, like whatever taboo we want to get. Like they, she said, <laughs> again, like they make us sound, they make us sound like monkeys. It needs to be a straight <laughs> white alpha male. The 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 secondary antagonist, her girlfriend, is also basically yeah. very prominent as well. Like th- these are, yep, these are just in insane things here, th- insane claims. And no, yeah. hopefully it, this is good. done. They're gone. I do want to get something specific for me though. I think this makes a lot of sense. What I mean by that is, to me, Cassandra was a deeper character. Her voice acting, and I don't mean to be mean or make fun of anyone. Her voice no, acting was that. incredibly better than the other, and then her uh, opposite. Her lines yeah. seem to be better as well. Like I've seen comparisons and reaction. It seems like everything Cassandra did was better, so that makes a lot more sense well, now like because said, she was going to be the, the only game. choice. Yeah, like you said, like they, she was supposed to be the main character originally, but they had they had to add the other one, so they 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 probably like kind of sped it up on that part yeah it and another thing av frey and jacob frey this was and it's a shame i didn't have a podcast at the time so i can't back anything up but at at the time i was like why am i playing as jacob and and this doesn't support it because they did say even even so they weren't going to give it to evie frey but even Mm -hmm. then i found evie frey's story to be again way more compelling than jacob's way more And, and hopefully this is done hopefully we're done with all this nonsense the silliness the the again straight white alpha male thing like oh hopefully God. we're all done with that we don't have to broach this topic again everyone was fired i do think it's interesting um and this is not to point blame i'm not i don't work at ubisoft i do think it's interesting that these three were fired why were not others fired why you know, of course, Yves Gilmont is the is in place of the CCO. Why has nothing fallen on him? It doesn't seem that he's suffered any sort of disciplinary action. Mm. Yeah, I mean, he's he leads the stu- he leads everything there. So how is he not pointed to, or why has he not been questioned on how this has yeah. happened around him? But you know, I don't work there. I don't know how things like that work. That seems a little strange, but hey, I don't know. Yeah, no, it's definitely weird, but uh, nope. Yeah, hopefully this is all over with. I uh, honestly, and this is another thing, and I don't want to, I don't want to be that that guy about it either, being like, oh my god, I love women so much. I'm not trying mm-hmm. to play that either. I loved Aya in Assassin's Creed Origins. Oh, I for sure. Loved, I loved when she became Amunet. That was even cooler. Oh, dude, the for ending sure. was so cool with her she goes off and stabs caesar that was dope that was so Mm. cool and we never even got to play as her and that's a huge fail on their part huge she was so cool the way she talked oh my god it was so cool yeah no i'm actually and i'm actually glad that they kept or they in the new Valhalla in Valhalla you get to choose and you can change whenever you want like if you want if you're like playing as a male and halfway through the game you're like you know what i want to play as a female and you can just switch that is cool and and no to my knowledge no one's ever done anything like that i I don't think you've ever been drastically be able to change on a whim a character that was so involved in the story yeah it's crazy (laughs) i need to put (laughs) i need to put in my twitter i'm not going to do this because people are won't know the context but i need to put straight white alpha male in my bio as fucking that was that oh was some nonsense right there my, my God, jesus start right all right moving on injustice 3 has possibly been teased by the tie-in comics writer tom taylor my person one of my personal favorite Uh, comic book writers has been teasing a new injustice property he has not specified what this is but he has been slowly releasing um letter pictures throughout uh i would say the last few weeks maybe two weeks um he is now Mm. on the letter s so you can because he has i n j u s of course and once he spells out injustice i'm assuming we're getting a new year or something i'm not too sure but if you go to his Twitter, you'll be able to see all of his 
kind of little hints and teases. Um, I think one was, what if it had been different? Things like that. Mm. The, I'm very excited. E- even if it's a comic or the new game, which, of course, we are due for a game, and I believe we even know it's being made. I think it got leaked a few years ago, um, which, of course, is being made because uh, the last one kind of technically ends on a, I guess, choice slash cliffhanger, which was weird. I don't know why they chose that. Um, but Alex, I'm, I'm excited. There's not too much to go on here, but I'm excited for this. No, yeah, same. I'm, I'm excited for it too. I'm, I was actually when I was looking at a picture of Injustice Two the other day, and I'm Ooh. like, where's three? Yeah, and I was just a, thinking myself like, yeah, like where is where is three? I miss it. I'm so excited. Yeah, I'm so excited. Oh my god! Now I'm thinking about Injustice Three. Injustice Two was so good too. Uh, their facial animation was really good on that. I remember too. Mm-hmm. Uh, moving to a a very big deal be honest with you um xbox one minus two this story comes uh from a report on the verge it says that microsoft has discontinued xbox one x and xbox one s all digital edition ahead of the series x launch a quote from microsoft reads this is a natural step of stopping production due to the ramping up into the future with xbox series x only to then confirm that an older version of the console, the Xbox One S, will still be produced worldwide. That's very interesting, very odd, that they're stopping the One X, stopping the all digital, but staying with the One S. And very interesting. You would think they yeah. would keep the X and then just lower the price of the model. I'm sure there's some sort of reason why they're doing this. They're not dumb people over on Microsoft, but interesting. All the other the other ways what do you think of this alex um it's cr- it's crazy to me that they're just stopping the whole thing in general because the x is like the most recent one at, for right now so it's just crazy that they're That's stopping true. production so like i'm i would have thought they would have stopped the the the, 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 the s you would think it'd be almost first. the opposite the s stops, yeah exactly they continue this for maybe another year and then they stop these I think yeah, it's true. I think weird. it's clear Microsoft is taking all these things, right? They shut down mixers, right? They shut down yep. their Microsoft stores. They are now stopping these systems to being made. It seems like they're trying to save as much money as possible for whatever mm-hmm. their future is. Whatever their plan is, they're they're gearing up for something big. No, they don't do all this at once for no reason. This is over the course of I think I mean if we really think about it, over three months they've been stopping these random services and seemingly saving money for some big load i'm excited for whatever that is maybe it's just game pass or trying to save money on game pass or doubling down on game pass maybe it's nothing exciting maybe Mm -hmm. we're getting crazy here alex we're getting nuts you ready for this buddy maybe they're saving money to divert something like this there's small earning calls happening every time, every few days, and every quarter, of course, because that's how earnings call work. That's them talking to the stockholders and addressing to them what their ideas are. Um, and this brought up an important question from EA. EA has expressed interest in acquiring studios, which leads people to speculate in them purchasing WB Games. Now, to my knowledge, and most people that I've seen on Twitter, EA most likely does not have enough cash on hand to make a $4 billion deal. So either a small deal must be negotiated, something else entirely, maybe purchasing a single studio rather than the full $4 billion deal from AT&T. Or, Alex, stick with me here. I'm sticking. Microsoft saves all this money. Xbox saves all this money from cutting all these services because they're about to drop $4 billion on acquiring a giant studio Mm. in WB Games. All of these studios mm-hmm. uh, being acquiring, most likely the $4 billion a year, gears them up for at least Batman, at least Harry Potter, year of exclusivity, maybe two years of exclusivity and making games. Mm, there's that, some, imagine that, dude, there's some sort of deal with them because the $4 billion is not just for the studios. This is, this, is, uh, this is working with all the major IPs that EA holds. This is trying to mm. rework... Uh, uh, some sort of studio deal that, that I'm sure that they're going to work with. WB Games has a lot of studios. I'm not sure if Microsoft is interested in all of them, so they might buy them all to either just throw them away later or sell them off to someone else that can afford the smaller studios because they make like mobile games and things like that. They might not be interested in those. 
But mm. a lot of money being diverted for seemingly a giant deal. And I'm seeing bada bing, bada boom, a couple strings attached there, some conspiracy theory making. Maybe they're gearing up for dropping $4 billion on to buy AT&T, uh, sorry, to buy WB Games from AT&T. Alex, am I crazy? Am I a weirdo? Am I that guy that everyone retweets that gif where he has all those red strings attached <laughs> and he's screaming at it? Am I that guy? No, I, I think you're on. I, th I think you're on to something. I, I'm. I, I, I I'm tasting it, Alex. I taste it in my mouth. I'm like, mm, there's nefarious things happening. You don't. A giant company like Microsoft doesn't do anything for no reason. There's no, reasonings sure. behind all of this. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's something else, but. Boy, oh boy, if I'm right, I'm going to not shut the fuck up about it. <laughs> 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 oh, do you have any thoughts, Alex? Um, I'm definitely excited for, like, I don't think they're going to do the, I, like, as much as it would be cool for the exclusivity, I don't think they're going to do it just because of what Phil Spencer said recently about he doesn't like exclusive ex exclu like he's, he doesn't like exclusives he wants it to to be you know i guess everybody to be able to have it no that, so I, I, I respect I that we did just have a headline that did read he does not like exclusives so i yeah. my only thing with the exclusive deal doesn't mean it won't happen though. yeah it doesn't mean it won't happen because he might not like exclusives he probably likes owning batman for a short amount of time he probably likes oh, owning sure. a Suicide Squad game for a short amount of time. He probably likes owning mm. a Harry Potter game for a short amount of time. Like, these are mind-blowing. Like, if you don't have Game Pass with the new Batman game, like, you're, like, crazy. So, mm. I I feel like mm. I got a hook, and I bit on it. And let's see where <laughs> this hook takes me, Alex. Just like that episode of SpongeBob. You oh, play, you're playing with the hooks. Playing you can take it. Moving on. Back to Ubisoft. We got a little diverge there in the end, but Alex gave me too good of a segue to not to not get it up. <laughs> Ubisoft CEO Yves Guillemont has announced that the next Ubisoft Forward Digital Conference will be broadcast in September. No specific date given. Just a quick little thing. Also sticking with Ubisoft. Splinter Cell anime series by the John Wick writer Derek Colston coming to Netflix. This is according to Variety. Colston will serve as both writer and executive producer for the series, which is reportedly planned for 16 episodes split into two seasons, with Netflix and Ubisoft partnering to bring the series to life, and it will obviously be a Netflix exclusive. Super exciting for that. Same. I yeah, mean, John Wick hopefully... writer to make Splinter Cell? I am fucking oh. in, dude. Do you, now, hear me out. Do you think this would make them... Um, what's the word um they like after this if it makes very if it gets very successful they'll be saying. like all right we'll make another game or they're making this and then during the series of this happening I like they're they're, they're announced that, alex, that they had a game alex listen to me right now i fucking mm. love you all right mm. we're like two mm. two coins on the same coin i don't i think i fucked that up anyways i i'm we're, we're, two, we're the same side on on, on when well, no i fucked it up too. <laughs> yep on. we sure did all right now i'm right there with you now we're this the same is, side of a coin yeah you nailed it now i'm of two minds of this just like you are either mm -hmm. this is to capitalize on no splinter cell game being made which i don't believe no and no to way. and to keep the series alive in some way or option number two mm. which is much more compelling and i think is more likely true is this splinter cell anime series is going to boost splinter tales popularity i guess you could say and yeah. then around the time the game comes out you get a whole new audience interested in this new game now i don't know how close they can get these seasons out or these episodes out but mm. if they nail it that sounds dope. You, you uh, that'd be exciting, Will, because you saw how well you saw how good The Witcher did. Yes, dude. And now they're making a prequel to this. Yeah, they, in the same kind of sense, it's animated. Um, I think it's with the first Witcher or something like that. Something. Yes, it has to do with the first Witcher. That which is cool. I I didn't even think about like I've never even thought about well who was the first Witcher. So that sounds fun. I thought about it, but I'm like. How, how I never realized like how long ago it was, and it said it was like at least a, it's thousand, a thousand years. Yeah, yeah, a thousand years. That's a long time, and I'm 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 yeah. here for it, Alex. I'm here for it. 
Oh, for sure, dude. I'm excited. And I'm, I'm hey, man, I'm, I'm hoping for another Witcher game. Yes. After, after Cyberpunk, of course. Um, That was their plan, right? Didn't that get either leaked or they said that? They're, I think they said that. It's Cyberpunk. They said they're, not def- they said they're definitely not done with, with Witcher. They said, I, I, that's what I, yeah, I remember. They, yeah, it was Cyberpunk, then, then it was something, and then it was the new Witcher, whatever that would be. And see, I thought it was like Cyberpunk for for like a little while, and then they'll go back to Witcher. Probably, I don't remember. It was a while ago, and they said this tangentially either through a leak or someone at Cyberpunk actually said that. Yeah. Alex, we get to a story here that I don't. I I. It's not that I don't understand it, but it is. Mm. It it has so much stuff I don't necessarily care about, but am mm. interested in. I know that is kind of contrary to each other, but I wanted to bring it up anyways. And I think, Alex, you would actually like some of this stuff. I want to bring okay. to your attention the Giga Leak. Yes, yes, the Giga Leak, Alex. I know you've been burning to know what the Giga Leak is. So I'm here to tell you. Mm-hmm. This is a massive leak of Nintendo's source code. And everyone is talking oh. about this in the video game ecosystem. This is Patrick Kupik over on Vice. So... The Giga Leak. The re- this name was brought to you by retro enthusiast and amateur game developer Cosmo. Came up, then realized the treasure of uh, sorry, the trove of secrets that had leaked out of Nintendo last week, which has dominated gaming's attention ever since. Source code for games like F Zero and Link to the Past, a full development history of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, prototypes for Super Mario Kart and Yoshi's Island, which Nintendo called Super Mario Bros. Five Yoshi's Island at some point, a cache of emails from Agonaut Software co developers of Star Fox. It's massive, historical, unprecedented look at the career responses of companies like Apple prides itself on secrecy, but it was also most likely stolen and thus represents an invasion of privacy that has fans and preservations confused on how to view the material. So apparently there was a massive leak, I think a few years ago over on mm-hmm. Nintendo and they stole a lot of stuff from servers and I think they've been, they gave it to someone and they've been slowly leaking it throughout a few years. And I think this is the new one. As far as I understand, this is a person outside of the uh, the looking gas looking in. Um, and that's, I'm pretty sure, how I've seen it. So, on mm-hmm. Friday afternoon, an anonymous 4chan user posted a link to several files hosted on Anon Files. Which, by the way, those two, those two things right there put together sound terrifying. And do not ever touch these things. But <laughs> someone was brave enough to do it, so we didn't have to. So, yep. a service, uh, the Anon files, a service for people to share material without fear, it will get linked back to them. Even in the rough and tumble world of 4chan, people were hesitant to see where they were. They, they already know where I was going with this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, especially the little children out there, never go to 4chan and especially never click on something on 4chan. <laughs> I'm not clicking those, wrote one user. <laughs> it began a game of chicken before inevitably someone downloaded the face and realized they were sending something far more than a virus. Around the same time, a community of enthusiasts who specialize in dissecting rare gaming material became aware of what happened thanks to bots they programmed to scrap places like 4chan. That, by the way, shout out to these people with bots. Like, There's a lot of bots that do a lot of stuff, and I feel like everyone's got a bot for yeah. something. And you know what? Shout out to I you guys. Yeah, I want a bot too. And I don't know what very because it looks like they have to be very specific because that's a very specific thing. And every time I hear bots, it's very specific. I want a bot that, that I need to figure out what I want a bot to do that's very specific that I don't want to do myself. I think it's reading my emails. Oh my god! Like just marking them as read, not actually reading, but just marking them as read so I don't have to worry about it because I'll see the notification. And I always know what the email is, but it never mm-hmm. gets marked as read. Shit was really annoying. Um, yeah. back to back to the article. <laughs> <laughs> that group who asked to keep their name a secret because the Nintendo's frequent of issuing lawsuits. Yes, they will sue you. So do, you do not want to be linked to this. So the term <laughs> geekly came to the Cosmo, like we said. Uh, quote, if you're first to get recognition as I was first, said Cosmo in a private mention on Discord over the weekend. That's when everything exploded. Twitter, Reddit, the group Cosmo is a part of. It was everywhere. On a Discord channel I watched in real time as hundreds of fans picked apart the files, trying to sort out what was new, what was old, and what seen fans into a tizzy. The phrase, quote, and this is an expletive just in case you're with a child or something. The quote, holy shit, was uttered often enough that it eventually became meaningless. Every few minutes, people would find something re- uh, revelatory. Like the word, quote, again, another expletive, fuck, snuck into the source code of Link to the Past. Or confirmation oh. that Luigi was in fact meant to be part of Super Mario 64 
especially striking was the evolution of Yoshi's character design. Alex, tell me this is not a Velociraptor with the with a messed up face. I I, I, saw, I saw it. Just look up Yoshi if you want to see this picture. This thing looks nightmarish. Boy it oh looks, boy. It looks like a uh the small ones, the comp uh, the compies. But like yes, taller. it does look like a compi. You are nailing this. Yeah, it, I know you people at home might not know that. Alex is like a dinosauriologist. I know that's not real, but I like jokes. Um, and he like mm-hmm. nails the dinosaurs. Not gonna, not gonna lie, that's a perfect segue for I was just about to mention earlier. There's a Kickstarter game, Death Ground. You mentioned I am totally pledging this. Death the dinosaur Ground? survival horror game. The one that the, the the survival one you sent me that it's a, it looks like Alien Isolation but it looks oh, like Jurassic Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I faintly remember this. Can you send it back to me? Because I, I just want to see it. I am totally kick, like like pledging this because imagine Alien Isolation, but instead of the alien, it's raptors, and you gotta like do cool. the, like you gotta hack. It has it has to like uh you gotta go through. The, it's a co op game too. Oh. I'm I'm gonna send you the can, link. Can you? But it's co op. Can you so, say the name again just in case the audience missed it? I didn't. I missed Death it too. Brown. Death ground, right? Death as in the ground. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Death ground. Okay. That sounds uh, uh, okay. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. I want to read more about it now because because you just pitching it like that. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. No, it's literally like I like because you had sent me a picture of a raptor and it had a a, a pic. It looked like the little uh, what is it called? The little sonar ra- looking that green thing that looks like from Alien Isolation to yeah. see where he's at. Yeah, yeah. It looks like that, but there's like a raptor like in front, and I'm like, oh, snap. Okay, okay. Like, it looks cool. Okay, I'm excited about this. I'm excited. I'm totally pushing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want, uh, if you can, add that to the doc. I kind of want to read about it. Um, But uh, we can actually end the show with that if you want to. Uh, so, uh, back to this. There have been two major breaches of Nintendo security in recent years. On January 31st of this year, hacker Ryan, Ryan Rocks Hernandez... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I love when when they use they use it as like a their username as their middle name in in these articles because it's just so funny. Pleaded guilty to hacking Nintendo servers in possession of child pornography. Oh Jesus Christ! This turned a corner. My God! You guys will say, <laughs> sorry, child pornography. The FBI reported Hernandez, who released a Switch design before it was announced, had quote thousands of confidential Nintendo files, but it was never been made public where Hernandez had access to and how wildly he shared it. The other intrusion happened in 2018 by Zamis Clark, who went by the number of pseudonyms online, including Slimstream, Rayleigh, and Wacko. Uh, among the video game community, he's more commonly known as Wacko. Uh, according to The Verge, the former Secretary of Research first managed to infiltrate Microsoft servers and stole roughly 43,000 files, which included early versions of Windows, code names for unannounced and unreleased products, and in-development versions of various software. When Clark was caught, he was released on bail and soon after hi- hacked Nintendo ser- Jesus. So he was released on bail and then hacked Nintendo servers, gaining access to, quote, highly confidential game development servers with code of unreleased games. Um, wow. Nintendo wasn't aware for the breach for months. Clark successfully infiltrated Nintendo's private network in March 2018, but didn't become aware of what happened until May. Jesus. As with Hernandez, it never became public what exactly Clark was able to get from Nintendo. The original 4 chan post that kicked off the Giga Leak was titled... PPG leak time, another expletive, fuck Ganix? I have no idea what any of that means. The post was <laughs> published 4chan VP, which, what is any of this? Which is specifically dedicated to Pokemon. It sounds like, okay, I'm skipping some of this. is a lot of garbage. Let's skip it. One of the most important Nintendo leaks in the last several years happened in May 2018. When a version of Pokemon Gold and Silver shown publicly in Nintendo's former Space World trade show in 1997 appeared. This version was interesting to the Pokemon community because that trade show version was different from what was shipped in 1999. This goes on and on and on, and this is all very, very cool stuff. If you want the full details, head over to Vice. This is a long article, and it's very good. deserves a click, and you should should read it. I'm actually going to save that for later because I want to read the rest of this. This is very interesting. Um, And I... I I'm never really aware of these like data leaks or hacks, so I'll be it'll be fun to read through all that. Um, Alex, does that excite you at all? You, is this going to be added to the read list, or could you care to Mario jumps less? I'm all I'm waiting for is when they announce the 35th anniversary situation. Alex is like, why didn't you hack 
the date of this 35th anniversary. You're like, I don't care about any of this stuff. You hacked the 35th anniversary, you got my attention. I don't even need to see the game. All I need to know is that Super Mario Sunshine, Super Mario 64, and Super Mario Galaxy are all coming to the Switch. That's all I need to know, just a guarantee. Or even just Sunshine. Just give me Sunshine. A shame on the Switch, and I'm going to say this and don't at me do you understand me achievers all right i love all of you don't at me on this the classic titles on the nintendo switch library is laughable from what they have laughable i'll say that again it is laughable what they carry on the switch and that they could easily include and make so much money off of why are there not that many zelda games how many zelda games are that exist in this world that can easily be ported they own these ports already they've already ported all these games on wii u all they have to do is port it again mm. why does it take them so long to do these things they have they are now caught up with snes games they're now done are they just going to stop now? Because that's what they do almost every time. They they never really go into the Nintendo 64. They never get into the Game Boy era. Why does the buck always stop at SNES? Please, for the love of God, <laughs> be better at ports. Make more Zelda games on there. Put the Mario games on there. They are leaving valuable IP to die where they could easily make money. I never will never understand Nintendo's... Like the amount of GameCube games that I would buy for the Switch is ridiculous. I don't understand Nintendo's need for... It's artificial... Well, I'm missing the word, uh, and I apologize. Um, uh, but, but they are purposely not putting out games to highlight the other games they have. I get it. You want people to buy Breath of the Wild for 60 bucks four years after it's released. But for the love of Christ, just release classic games <laughs> so I have something to play on the Switch. I'm, I'm playing my own crossing for the last five months. By itself. What was that? I said I am willing to pay for GameCube games like on, on the Switch for 30 bucks. I'm, I'm right there with you. I would love to play any of these games I've missed out on a GameCube, and there's plenty of them. I would love to play these GameCube games. I would love to any in any way. Game Boy, good for the God's sakes, anything. <laughs> Yeah. But for whatever the reason, games. and I'll never understand this, Nintendo gets off on this all the time. Everyone gives crap to my uh, to Xbox about get, about porting games and having backwards compatibility. Everyone gets on PlayStation. Nobody attacks Nintendo for this stuff, and we should. We really should. That's how we're going to make them do stuff, is if we just get on them about why isn't these games on your platform to regularly buy. Also... Why do I have to keep buying these games? Shouldn't I buy them once and I should have them like forever? It's it's just silly and it needs to stop. They gotta get with they gotta get with the program. They gotta jump ten years into the future because they're still sure the amount of times we buy the Kingdom Hearts on PlayStation. I have no problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I hey that last part is not as important as just releasing it. I I don't care about rebuying it. They're great games. If I have to pay for the port. So be it. But for the oh, no, price if, Nintendo. If, it, yeah, it's like, if the port comes out, I'll definitely buy it. I feel like we I feel like we complain a little bit on Nintendo and then they give us something and then we eat it and we shut up for a little while. Like we just gotta like <laughs> keep on them and make them do something. Because it seems like they're releasing Animal Crossing and they're like Alright, well that's it. Enjoy. And that's just yep. not good enough. Not good enough. But it doesn't matter because everyone's good. just gonna keep buying the system anyways, and they're just gonna keep buying Animal Crossing. Rant over. Hyperscape is coming to consoles on August 11th. <laughs> well, I'm saying I, I meant like uh, finally because I really wanted to play it. Uh, it's interesting you say yay like that. Um, I'm going to bring up an interesting point after this. And I'm curious if okay. you agree with me. The game's PC open beta runs until August 2nd. Thanks to cross progression, any items you've unlocked either through the in game shop or the current 30 tier battle pass will carry over to the console version when the game officially launches. Thanks to the Crowncast Twitch expansion, you can progress your battle pass by watching Twitch streams, even if you haven't played the game on PC. Oh, sorry, mouse can drive. And you will get any rewards you've earned when you sign in to Hyperscape on console for the first time. Crowncast itself will see the addition of a new feature in Season 1. The Kudos feature will now allow viewers to react to exciting... I'm not saying that. Moment, exciting moments in chat by using bits to generate a visual effect that appears in a streamer's game. 
ladies and gentlemen, they wrote Pog unironically. I am not saying that. Do you understand me, Ubisoft? All right? Okay? Silliness out of here. As the open beta period comes to an end, the development team wishes to thank players, even those who technically haven't played yet, with the opportunity to earn 600 bit crowns. Hyperscape's premium in-game currency. All you have to do between now and the end of the open beta on August 2nd is play the game or watch a Crowncast-enabled Twitch team for just one hour. Hyperscape is launching Ooh. free-to-play on PS4, Xbox One, and PC August 11th. Alex, are you excited for this at all, or has it is it too little too late? Uh, I mean, I saw the trailer for it, and it looked cool. So are you, I really want to try it. So you're just down to try this and... Play. Yeah, I definitely want to try it because I mean, if it if it if it's good, I mean, I'm gonna keep playing it. But if it doesn't pull me in, then I'm not gonna play it. I got you. I got you. I got you. I um, I'm interested. I played some on PC. Um, my PC can only run it on potato quality, so it doesn't look the greatest. But I can play it. It was fun so far. I'm. Uh, it's definitely a game, basically like every other battle royale. I'm not mm -hmm. playing this without people. Like I'm just not. Yeah. This is not fun anymore. It yeah and see how, how how did it pull you in enough like apex that like when we first played apex we we jumped in we liked that like first thing um <sighs> but I'm, like, with like for example like with warzone we played it tried it the first time it was it was okay and then we kept playing it and then it got better so do you think this is going to be that do you think it's like apex or I don't think we're playing this and we're like, we're, and we're like, oh my god! All right, guys, every single night we jump on Hyperscape. We're playing this. Let's like, let, let's get this battle pass leveled up. Uh, you know what? I want to yeah. look cool. Let me buy something in the shop because I want my character to look cool. I mm -hmm. think that's probably gonna come later. This looks pretty bare bones, and yeah. I don't hate the game so far. I just think it's lacking just that little, just that little thing. Um, I am excited about the events. The events are really cool, and I wish they happened a little quicker. Um, I don't know if you know this, Alex, but mm. just in case you don't know, Hyperscape has this continual loop of events that happen, and people mm. who are watching in the Twitch stream can vote on which event they want to happen. There's things like low gravity. There's things like um, increased damage, I think, or something like that. There's a bunch of them. There's like triple jump. There's like... There's all sorts of little random events that you can make happen, and that stuff looks cool. Um, mm. And there's a fusion system rather than, like, attachments or anything like that in the games. There is your base gun, then there's four levels to that gun, so you have to find that gun. And for every additional gun you find, it is upping that level gun. So, for instance, if I find a shotgun, I find that same shotgun in a different house. I then fuse that, and that shotgun is now a level two, and then I can get that all the way up to level four, and that increasingly makes it better and better and better. That seems fun, mm. and again, I think this is. I think it's going to be really indicative of how fun the game is when I have the team, you know, the squad with me, you and John. We're actually playing this game together. Yeah. Um, my and it, those are my initial thoughts. I, I I like it. I need to play it on a console because my PC just can't run this thing. It's too much going on, but I'm excited to play it. Moving on from. No, yeah, I'm definitely. I definitely try it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited to play with this video. Moving on to Destiny 2 Beyond Light. It did get pushed. This is just a quick date update. Um, huh. Date update. I like that. This is a quick date update. Huh. That should be the segment. Date updates. I'm writing that down. Date updates. There. Written down. Patent, patent pending. Patent pending. Patent pending. Today we announced... Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm skipping all this. Uh, the, it got pushed to November 10th. Beyond Light, November 10th. That's it. Got it. Me and Alex are excited. It's coming to Game Pass day one. Boom. We don't got to buy it. That's dope. Nice. Uh, and another quick one, Rocket League going free to play this summer. Um, after nearly, uh, This is on RocketLeague.com. Nearly five years, millions of players, and billions of soccer matches played. It's time to talk about the next chapter of Rocket League. The game wouldn't be where it is today without the dedicated and amazing community. Today, we're excited to announce that we're gearing up to make the community even bigger. Beginning later this summer, Rocket League is going free to play. Then they go to announce that the core game will remain the same, no major changes, nothing crazy is being announced. They're reworking, I think, the tournament editions, other mm. games. Um, they are going to be available on the Epic Game Store as well. This will be the same time they go free to play. They're also introducing cross-platform play, so you'll be able to play on any system with your friends, which is very exciting. Um, mm -hmm. And if you already own Rocket League, you will gain what's called the Legacy Status, which gives you a bunch of in-game goodies and things like that. If you want to know the specifics, you just head over to uh, kickstarter.com just search free to play you'll find it and it'll tell you all the things you'll get um i see where you put in that kickstarter alex thank you let's uh we'll end the show with that um 
really quickly we'll go over ps plus ps plus games i'm very excited about for this month a fantastic month for ps plus call of duty Modern Warfare 2 campaign remastered is free to play on playstation plus remember if you have playstation plus you all you need to do it's is crazy too. yes insane all you need to do get on your playstation go all the way to the left side of the screen there's a little plus icon hit the plus icon add each game to your library even if you don't care about playing them now you will eventually want to play them uh, just a word of the wise, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 Remastered is available right now. Fall Guys is not. That will be on their Tuesday, which is the official release. So, another cool thing about that, it is coming day and date to PlayStation Plus. Similarly, like Rocket League did, I think, four years ago now. Um, which is really fun that we just had a Rocket League and we just go into Fall Guys. I do think Fall mm -hmm. Guys is going to be really fun. Alex, if you do me a huge favor, um, on mm -hmm. Tuesday, you remember that, hey... Uh, Elijah asked the favor of me. You go over to your PlayStation, you go over and you download Fall Guys so we can have fun and play together. Got it. I think we'll like it. I think it's a fun like party game. Um, so I do want to try it with you. Now, I want to talk with you about these right after this. Games with Gold. Portal Knights, August 1st, August 31st. Override Mech City Brawl, August 16th to December, September 15th. MX Unleashed, August 1st, August 15th. Red Faction 2, August 16th, August 31st. Jesus, that's sad. Now, with that said, <laughs> mm -hmm. we have Game Pass. So, I get it. You know you know what I mean? Like, this is garbage, but we got Game Pass, which is fantastic. But yeah, because a you, lot of games are already on Game Pass. If you put those two things together, those look terrible. That is a terrible offering. PS Plus blows games with the gold out of the water. Again, though, we got Game Pass. So, honestly, I don't really care that much because uh, I got Game Pass. Now. No, for sure. That is uh, the news for the week. Thank you so much for joining us. We like to slow the show down a little bit. Um, instead of what's queued up, Alex, I, let's talk this Kickstarter real quick because I want to see what is going on with this yeah game. so there's a trailer and i haven't watched it just yet because okay. I'm, I'm going to watch it when i have volume because okay. um but it from the screenshots that it's very early it looks like and because this is the game is not supposed to come out to september of next year mm -hmm. yeah so death but from what they have they said it's early footage and early game is like 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 what they're showing now this looks this looks fun so uh reading from their official kickstarter death ground is a solo and co-op survival horror game that throws players into a desperate battle for survival against deadly ai dinosaurs enter the death ground with a team of up to three players for squad based action or attempt to survive alone in a solo session as huge dinosaur fanatics and experienced game developers we're building a game that we're extremely passionate about and believe this game people would love to play for years, we've spotted all types of requests and comments across the internet for this game type. We've heard your calls, and this is our answer. After doing serious worship, re Jesus, I'm dying. After doing serious research and development, we've come to some conclusions presented throughout the page, throughout this page. Jesus, I'm really dying. That we think you want me to take over? We'll make. Thank you, please, please. I'm dying. Okay. Uh, we've come to some conclusions presented throughout the page that we think will make f uh, for a compelling game that's expandable and serves a multitude of player types. We've already have a super fun internal demo that demonstrates the key gameplay pillars listed below. We're a collective of experienced game development professionals and specialists in Unreal Engine. Beyond this, we have a wide range of talented crowd collaborators we frequently work with who can help us create something incredible. So feel free, we're in a great position to develop a, great, a game like this and we've come to Kickstarter for your support on this journey. Um, yeah, please know everyone Everything on the page and trailers, pre-alpha footage and content. So far, they've said only that platform is on Steam, but they said once they get more, backing. I guess, uh, more uh, backing, or they can go into future uh, platforms so they can make it more of a longevity game. Uh huh. Um, but they, uh, they, they have the people that have uh, worked on that is working on this. They have worked on. Um, I looked underneath all the way at the bottom. They've worked on RuneScape, Alien Isolation. Lego Star Wars, Soma, Cube, oh, like cool. a bunch of games. Uh, yeah, so Amnesia. Looks... So like they have the the horror of Amnesia. Mm -hmm. Of course, the 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 type from Alien Isolation. Like that's why I probably they got that radar thing. So um, it looks yeah, like you play the solo or co op. Yeah, so it looks like for twenty bucks, you yep. can uh you can get the game. Uh, at a, yep. it says a special Kickstarter price, so most likely it's going to be probably thirty bucks. 
And then yeah, there's, I mean, there's, there's much even more. You can do seven bucks. You can do thirty three bucks and get two copies, which is kind of cool. So even more of a yep. discount. Um, and sorry, th yeah, this is euros as well. So there are two different prices, but y you understand what I mean. They have a rough estimate of what it's actually going to cost. There's a bunch of tiers, by the way. It looks like there is a bunch. Yeah, you can get a lot of copies of this game. There is tiers. The, there's a tier that you can go up to five thousand dollars. Wow, I want to see that one. Hold on, hold on. Uh, it's uh, the Spinosaurus, and there's one actually after that. It's ten thousand. It's the Tyrannosex Tyr Tyrannosaurus Rex Planum Edition. Fifty and copies. Yeah, fifty copies of the game. Copies of the game. <laughs> Oh, cool! They give they give you a physical T Rex statue. Uh, you yeah, get yeah, to hang out with the dev, custom in game T Rex, in game statue of you. That's cool. Mm -hmm. uh, and a bunch. So I'm not gonna read all this, but that's a, that's really cool. And I, I like that. No matter really what you like, back, you get your name in the credits, which is really cool. Yes, that's exactly what I was about to say. You get your name in the credits, and I was like, I really am, I'm a big dinosaur fan, and I really like Alien. So like having them kind of mix together is really. It seems like I'm gonna enjoy it. What is their always... goal? Do you see their goal anywhere? Um, I I don't. I can't towards find the it. bottom. Am there I was dumb? a thing that their next goal is one hundred and twenty-seven thousand. So they've made the goal then, because they, if they have well, multiple, they're at, goals... they're, they're at one hundred and fourteen thousand. Because like, if I scroll, let me see if I can find it. So all the way toward the bottom, it's a stretch goal. And it says stretch goal is. 127,000 and they they add a new dinosaur type to the game it's called an allo it's the allosaurus so it's a it's a stretch goal because they're at 114,000 god i suck at this i have no idea where you're reading this from <laughs> so go all the way down or like if you scroll all the way down past the the it shows like the tier the reward tiers yeah stretch goal there we go i on. found it thank you yep yeah so it looks like it, the 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 they needed 100k and they got it yep and then the next thing is they add a add a thing. Okay, I was actually yeah, going to be like, more, hey, let's help yeah. them reach their goal, but they already reached their goal. But no, yeah, I still want to share. I'm gonna more I'm gonna share this on Twitter. This looks really fun. Um, just so you guys have an easy place to go, you can check out my Twitter. I'll have this posted on there, just in case you're interested. And remember, yeah. Euden Chronicles, you can still back that, <laughs> even though it's made two point four million dollars. <laughs> no, for sure. Dude. Like a lot, a lot of people are into that game too. <sighs> See, I I kind of hate myself because I think I'm about to literally drop 140 bucks on this because I Ooh. really want a specific edition, but that's a lot of money, Alex. <laughs> yeah, yeah I want to drop I want to drop a, a little bit on this one too, but I'm like it says it um like I I think I'm probably gonna do the 30 dollar one, mm -hmm. but I was like I don't need two copies, but like I might get two, the two copies just so I can have like I'll get one and I'll give you one or something like that so we can both play it. That sounds cool. I'll give you 10 bucks. Yeah, welcome to that drama. I'm just excited because I want to like I've always watched these Jurassic Park movies and I'm like um like the, all these raptor scenes I'm like don't do that what are you doing I'm like now I can kind of like do what I want to do and you could do the thing you said you wouldn't do that's yeah. always the first thing oh um, exactly. right Alex this has been a fantastic episode of the easy Jimmy's game podcast I had a lot of fun um, I got a good rant in. That was fun. I got to yeah, I did. got to complain. That's my favorite thing. Um, and I got to spew about Suikoden and how that's coming back. This is a great, mm -hmm. great week. Great end of the week. Thank you so much for stopping by, taking your weekend time, and giving us a listen. And whatever day you like, make sure you go and just stare outside for a while. Take it in a moment for yourself. You deserve it. If you want to talk to us, you can go head over to our socials, Twitter, at UVM9000, at CravenFoodSkater. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, thoughts, ideas, complaints, any sort of issues, or just want to talk to us, you can support us on Patreon. That is a direct access guaranteed to the private message service on there. Private messaging is a guarantee that we will um, hear, and I will immediately get in touch with you on whatever issue, or if you just want to say hi. If you want anything else... You can, of course, go to all of our Twitters, help us out there, give us the follows, and then if you want to support us financially, again, patreon.com slash is just a buck, gives you the exclusives, any more, gives you more tiers and more benefits, and if you're a freeloader, again, don't worry, YouTube, podcast services, anything, like, comment, subscribe, share to all of your friends, that helps us out tremendously, don't worry, helps us out, you don't have to give us a buck for anything, especially if you're not in the financial opportunity to do that. Do not worry, you can help us in a plethora of other ways. Thank you so much for listening. Alex, thank you for joining me today. You guys. Thank you. Have a good rest of your week. And don't forget, go Chief.
Go Chief.